Hi, Debs Cooper, Global Stressologist here. Welcome to uh, my Friday Facebook Live. Thanks for joining me. Uh, I would love to know where you're from, if this is a replay or if you're watching live. Thanks very much. And let me know if you get any insights out of today because today's a really interesting one. So it's basically how to handle a panic attack. And this has come about from talking to clients the last few weeks actually, realizing this is really, really common. So I thought it would be a great one to share with you today. So thanks for joining me. So firstly, let me talk about what is a panic attack. And when I started thinking about this, I would actually say a panic attack is a bitch. It's not really. It's actually, uh, it's a frustrating thing, yes, definitely. But it's actually something and it's a grounding. And it tells you something that's going on deeper uh, mentally within you that you're not dealing with. And it's just going to keep reoccurring until you are learning to deal with it. So it's actually not that much of a BH. It's more a grounding to just let you know there's something going on and it's time to really assess what it is. <clears throat> So uh, let me know if you, hang on, I've just remembered one thing that I was supposed to do. Let me know if you have, uh, have them or have had them or know what's going on because I'd really love to know what's going on for you. So next is where does it come from? So when I talk about where it comes from, just be aware that there's going to be moments in here that you're going to go, yes, yes, I, I get that, and other moments, no. It doesn't mean you're going to attach to every single thing I'm going to say, but you're actually just going to go, I get that. No, I don't. Yes, I do. So it comes from triggers. And when I say triggers, triggers could be a color that somebody's wearing, uh, music that you hear, a movie, uh, people that say something or do something. It's a trigger that comes up from things that are around you that you're holding on to from memories of the past. Now clearly it's not uh, your future imagination because you haven't thought about that. So it's actually a trigger that's come up from your past, like I say, whether it's somebody who said something, you've watched something, you've heard something, uh, there's music, like I say. It's <clears throat> it's also comes from an uneasy feeling. When something stirs inside you, it's an uneasy feeling to know, oh, what is that? And then it can come upon. It also comes from nervousness. Uh, I know many public speakers who have little little panic attacks. Um, I haven't seen any of them had real big ones. Little panic attacks before they go and speak to the, the wider audience. So they can come on from an uneasy feeling. Um which turns into nervousness when you're nervous about something. So you, maybe you've got to say something to somebody or someone's going to say something to you and you don't really want to hear it. This is where it comes about that nervousness and <clears throat> which comes into worry. So it comes from worry when you're worrying about something. And we know when you worry about something, you spend all this time worrying and worrying and worrying and it doesn't eventuate. These are the things that can... Uh, pull off your panic attack. Stress. So anything stressful, if you've got so much going on at work and you're trying to juggle work and you're trying to juggle home, anything like that, when you've got that going on, you've got stress. And when you've got, and I call it mindset clutter, which is like stress where just everything is getting on top of you and your mind is just so full of things. So it's, I just label it mindset clutter. Um, it also comes from panic. When you're thinking about things and you're panicking to get things done on time or something's coming up and that's panic which comes into fear and so we also have fear that comes upon us sometimes quicker than what we think and what we know but fear comes upon us and these are things from uh, memories that we've held on to you know I talked about triggers and this is coming from that because that's where your fear actually comes from from it also comes from uh, anxiety, and anxiety does build on the panic attack, but also anxiety sits in the fear panic. So if you'd like me to talk about anxiety, let me know, because I would love to do a, a Facebook Live on that, no problem. Um, but there's small levels of anxiety, and then there's large levels of anxiety. So panic attacks come in our anxiety levels. And when you think about those, I'd love you to let me know what ones you've had that have that have gone and smacked you in the 
face or butt or wherever. Let me talk about the symptoms. So there's, there's many a symptom that comes from a panic attack. And like I say, there's different levels. There's a low level and then there's a real extreme level, but they all come from that panic attack. So when you have symptoms, they're things like a heart flutter. And when I say not a heart flutter when you meet someone for the first time or you hear something and it's very exciting, not a heart flutter like that. It's more a bunch of butterflies crawling around your heart or maybe spiders instead of the heart butterfly tinker 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 flutter it's a real heart flutter that goes on you can also have a shortness of breath and this is not because you've talked too much it's actually part of the symptoms of a panic attack where you just can't absorb enough breath in to think clearly to exhale and this was one that I had many, many years ago. I didn't realize it was actually panic attacks I was having, was the shortness of breath is that I couldn't actually get enough breath into my lungs, into my mind, into my body to start functioning. And I would be hyperventilating. So you can have a shortness of breath. And I didn't know what it was until I spoke to someone and they said, well, that's anxiety. So then I started working out what was actually going on. Uh, you can get a tightness in your chest. And when you get that tightness in your chest, this is all part of the symptoms that you get from um, panic attacks. Uh, you can feel your tummy turning over and over. And you know how I talked about the heart flutters, you know that, that tummy, and it's going round and round and round. And you're not knowing where the resolution is, and you're getting that. So the tummy, tummy, tummy is turning over. You can also get uh, nausea. And nausea is... Well, it's a feeling of sickness that can come up. You can also, you know, be the sick in your mouth, do the sick in your mouth. But it's also nausea. It gives you that, what am I going to do? Uh, you can have, the symptoms can also be sweat. These are just regular symptoms. There's a, there's a lot of symptoms that come on. But these are just ones that you might be aware of. There's sweat. You can start going, oh, it's very hot in here. Uh, it's very hot. It's clearly getting very hot. I'm getting nervous. What's really going on? I'm having a shortness of breath. I'm feeling like I need to curl over what's actually going on and this is all part of this panic attack that can come on just like that you can also get um, uh, eyesight blurry and this is something that I used to get was a little bit blurry with my eyesight and I'd be going what's what's going on here everything's blurry so you can also get that which comes with dizziness and this is where your fainting comes into play but your dizziness can happen and this can come up and smack you as quickly as well it's a feeling like you're out of control. And when I say that, it's like an out-of-body experience, but you're actually out of control and you can't really manage anything that's going on right now. So this is a feeling of out of control, not like an out-of-body experience where you can see yourself down there, but more that you're out of control. And you want to be on high alert, but you can't. You want to go, am I safe? You know, is everything around me? But actually you can't. So it's that alertness in your mind and this is where a panic comes in so these are the symptoms from a panic attack so when you think of those private message me if you'd like because I'd really love to know more about it so firstly I would like to let you know that it comes on quickly or slowly majority of the time it comes on quickly and you don't know when it's going to hit and it just comes up so you're not expecting it and it just hits so you can just be sitting there watching TV, a friend can message you, and then suddenly you can find that tightness in your chest and your dizziness and you're starting to sweat, whatever it is that's, that sent you that trigger. So it can come on quickly. And it comes when you're not expecting it. But the panic attack, and I say panic attack, the, the panicness, it, you know, I said it comes on when you're not expecting it. The panic, if we were to label it a person, it doesn't think of who you're around or where you are. It just arrives. So it doesn't go, oh, she's, she's on the couch, let's do it now. Oh, she's talking to her parents, let's do it now. Oh, she's going to go and present on stage, let's do it now. It doesn't label it like that, it just comes. So the key tips here are, first, number one, stop what you're doing. Whatever you're doing, stop. If you're driving, pull over. If you're on a phone call with someone, stop, get off. If you are doing a Facebook Live, get off. The key is to stop what you're doing right here, right now. So you're changing your state. 
The next is to focus on your breathing. And when I talk about focus on your breathing, I would love you to breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. So we know how to do this, but clearly it's in through your nose. I'm not telling you how many times to count on how many times to breathe in and how many times to breathe out. Three would be good. Breathe in and breathe out of here. And do that again. Focus on that breathing. So the reason we get you to do this is because you're actually focusing on something other than the panic attack of what's really going on. Put your hand on your heart. <clears throat> Put your hand on your heart and feel that you're still alive. Okay? It's okay. So breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth and put your hand on your heart. Do not care what is around you. If there's people around you or wherever you are, forget everybody. Put your hand on your heart. Know that you're still alive and you're still functioning. Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Know that this is going to pass. Know that it's going to pass and it's not going to be there forever. It's going to pass eventually. It may last 10 seconds. It may last a minute. It may last five minutes. It may last longer. Just know that it's going to pass eventually. There's a belief in yourself that you require, and this is to know that you can get through this. Believe that you can get through this. This is really, really important. Or you're putting your hand on your heart and you're doing this, know that you can get through this. It's also time when you get out of the situation, time to look at your lifestyle and what requires shifting. Because there's clearly something going on that this has happened, whether it's happened once, twice, many, many times, there's clearly something going on, and it's in your lifestyle. So when I talk about your lifestyle, it's all your surroundings, it's all your memories, it's what you're sleeping, it's your eating, who you're hanging around with, how you're dressing, your energy, all these things. So it's time to look at your lifestyle and what's going on. Having a panic attack doesn't mean to stop living. So yes, you may have had a panic attack in, at a friend's house, but it doesn't mean you can't go back to your friend's house. It means you continue living and you continue being you and doing you, but while you do that, we look at your lifestyle. Okay, so, and I say okay, because the other thing is, I know this is a, sounds a bit weird, is don't panic. I know, don't panic. If this happens to you, please don't panic over it. We all have levels of panic attacks. I've had them. And sometimes I've also just gone into, <sighs> before I do something, and, I, and I've taken that hand on my heart, or I've started breathing in my nose and out my mouth. Whatever it is, don't panic to this. Know that it's just going to come, and know that it's going to go away, but it's time to reassess everything. So please reach out. And when I say reach out, reach out to me. Let me know what's going on. Did this, uh, did this recording help you? Do you have panic attacks? Do you know people have had panic attacks? Um, I'm here. I'm totally here to pick uh, your mind and put whatever's going on in your mind out. And it's seriously time to look at your lifestyle and the changes that are going on for you, which can also cause a panic attack. But it's not about that. So please reach out. Um, Debs, D E B Z Cooper, C O O P E R dot com. Reach out to me, do it via here, whatever means it takes you. But it's time to deal with these things. But in the meantime, remember those techniques I've given you. I'd like to thank you very much for joining me today. I will see you next week. Well done. Thanks, team. And let's uh, take control of those panic attacks. See you later.